Is your method for making compost tea working? How do you know it's working? How do you know it's brewing enough microbes? Do you add molasses to making your tea? How much should you add? Some people say you should use molasses. Others say don't use it. Some say don't use too much. It can harm your microbes. What about adding things like fish emulsion and kelp? Do those improve the brewing process? Does it make better tea? The problem with this whole topic is that up till now, it's been very difficult for a gardener to know whether their brewing method is working. They can't compare all these different recipes because there was no way to measure the microbes. That's changed. And this video is all about measuring the microbes in compost tea. There's a new test kit on the market for measuring microbes. It's a simple test that you can do at home each test costs you about $10, and it only takes a few minutes to do the test. You don't have to send that sample off to a lab. This method measures the amount of microbes, the mass of microbes in your mixture. And it works well for soil, compost, and compost tea. It also gives you the fungal to bacterial ratio, that FB ratio. My goal in this video is not to tell you how to make great compost tea. What I want to show you here is how to use the test. And I'm going to do that by making some compost tea and monitoring the microbial content during the process. The results of that are really interesting. I'm also going to talk about the accuracy of this method and tell you about some other tests that I've done with it. I'm not going to go into details of how to use this test kit. I've done that in a separate video, but I will describe it briefly so you know what the method is. And if you're interested in getting this kit, I have a special discount, 15% off, and you'll see the code for that in the description below. The test is pretty simple. When you're ready to measure the microbes in your tea, just take a small sample using a tube that they've provided. It automatically measures the right amount. Then you add some salts to that, they come with the kit, you mix it up, you wait a little bit, and then you put a few drops of that on a test card. You let it sit for a couple minutes, and then you take a picture of it with your cell phone using their app. And their app does all the calculations for you. It's really easy to do. Which brewing method is the best? If you go on the internet, you'll find a thousand different recipes, and everybody claims that their method is the best method. Now, the goal of brewing tea is to grow lots of microbes, but none of those people tell you how many microbes they're actually brewing. They don't have the data to actually conclude that their method is best. Why? Because they've never actually tested their tea. I wanted to test this method. So what I did was I got some compost from my compost pile, put it in some water, added a little bit of molasses. Most people say that that's a good thing. And I started brewing the tea. The first sample was taken as soon as I put the mixture together. At this point, the only microbes I had were those native from the compost. That's time zero. I then took several more samples throughout the brewing process to see what the changes were. And here are the results. The app for this method can take two different kinds of readings. It can take the biomass and report it as micrograms carbon per gram. That's generally used for compost and soil. It also lets you get the biomass expressed as micrograms carbon per milliliter, and that's the one that's generally recommended for compost tea. I decided to take both readings and give you both sets of data. If we look at the change over time, we'll see that the amount of microbes increased by about 300%. The highest amount was after 16 hours. After that, the amount dropped down. Now this is pretty typical of a brewing process. There is a perfect time for harvesting that tea. At that point, you have the most microbes. If you wait too long, two things happen. One is that the food source runs out and they start dying off. And the second one is that the microbes use up too much oxygen and the lower oxygen levels decrease growth and again, some of the aerobic microbes will die off. So there is a perfect time to harvest that tea. You can see that the FB ratio at the beginning of the test was 0 0.4. 
What this means is that the amount of bacteria were higher than the fungi. After 16 hours, the FB ratio was 1.3. So that tells us that the amount of fungi was more than the amount of bacteria. I've been following the science of compost tea for quite a few years, and I see lots of people claiming that their methods are best. But what I never see, at least from gardeners, is any data to prove that. People tell me that they harvest it after 24 hours, but how do they know that's the right time to harvest it? They don't because they don't measure anything. Some people are trying to make up mixtures to get certain types of FB ratio. They want more fungi or they want more bacteria. Again, they have recipes. They tell you how to do that, but they don't know what the results are. Now, some people do use a microscopic method, but for the homeowner and the gardener, those are so inaccurate, they're pretty much meaningless. Except for this kit from Microbiometer. There is really no easy way for the home gardener to measure the amount of microbes in their compost tea. There's also no easy way to tell which method is best. What about the accuracy of this method? Well, I've run through a number of different tests to measure both accuracy and repeatability, and I've learned a lot about the test. One thing is that the coloration of the solution affects the results you get. So, for example, if you're adding humic acid to your mixture, that will tend to color the solution more. Different types of compost also give you different results depending on the coloration of the compost. Now, I've gone through and measured the accuracy and repeatability of the kit, and I've also done a test where I actually kill the microbes and measure the effect of the color with zero microbes and compare that to a sample with microbes. All of the results of those tasks are in a separate video, which you can get to right here. If you're brewing compost tea, it's important that you measure the microbes, and this kit will allow you to do that. But it's important that you understand the information in this video right here. Happy brewing!